the uh, uh, Ding Ding is going to share the finance breakthrough. Uh, hi everyone, morning to you. So, because of the MCO, the, although we work from home, that thought refused to pay our April and May salary. So it's like me working for two months without any salary, it's like the end of the world for me. Okay, so instead of paying staff, Dato used the wages subsidies from the government to set, set up his four new business. This is really the anger me. So unfortunately, none of the staff want to con confront with Nidato. So even the top management who worked for Nidato for almost 20 years was fired because they touched the salary issue. Then because of this, fear creeped into all staff. They rather work under operations and they don't, they don't want to lose their job. And the only, honestly speaking, I also need afraid of confrontation. Then the, until one day, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Joyce really hunted me with all the truth. Then uh, she keep talking about the confusion spirit. You really have to confront it. And okay, so I will just say to myself, it's either to do or die. So that, that day, I will just type out my resignation letter, talk to my managers, and both of us decided to confront our data. Then, in, in the process of new walking to the data room, I was prepared to lose my job. And inside my heart, I was keep praying to God that, God, I want justice to, to be done. And Lord, you will surely vindicate my case. Then, so when I'm about to open the door, suddenly the word of Esther anointing popped into my mind. Then I'm like, huh, what is that? Why now? So, it appears that the moment I open the door, Nidato is just in front of me. And I was, without thinking, I was just saying, that, Dato, please give me five minutes. I want to make a request. Then, Dato looked very shocked when he saw my face. Then, uh, instead of the anger, he decided to talk to me politely. And then, it, it, it just like suddenly he's wake up from his from something. Then he, he just feel calm and just sit down in his office. Then I can feel that it's actually the whole room heavy. The atmosphere just left like that. Just left. Then I, I just start to negotiate. Then thanks to God that that thought they agreed to pay back all the salaries. And he promised not to touch the, our salary anymore. Then not only that, every extra work that he assigned to me and my manager, he will pay extra cash and also more of the hotel vouchers. Mm. Yeah. So the moment that we both of my manager and I left the room, my Manager just asked me this thing. Ting Ting, ah, do you know what you did just now? Hmm? And I said, you just made a history. <laughs> you are so brave. No one dare to negotiate with that thought just like you do. Then he said, just now, I, I just feel an intense heat, like burning fire when I'm standing just be, be beside you. Then at that moment, I know that God's presence is with me during the whole ne negotiations. God never leave me alone in the battle. And then, do you know what ha happened to my data? Four of the business he failed to set up because of the licensing e issue. Then all the money just dumped me into the seas. Then, not only that, eight of his other businesses strike off and have to close down. Then, I like just, mm, how come a lot? I don't, he was so doing everything so well. Then suddenly I heard this voice because he touched the apple of my eyes. And because he hold back your salary and make you eat Maggie me, this is what happened. <laughs> I like, oh God, you are so awesome. Oh, your work really melt my heart. I, I really don't have to watch all the Korean movie already. My heart already melt. <laughs> so, all glory goes to God. And not only that, just because I'm faithful to give, Despite I have the financial cri cri crisis during that month, I still choose to give. Because I, I know that, um, actually, I really tempted not to give at that moment because the temptation is so great. That money is the food for my table. So I still choose to give because the prompting is so great. So this is what God 
did for my faithfulness and obedience. He blessed my investment four times the more than I can imagine. Really. Last few weeks, the investment just bo boosts out like nothing. Like, it really just blow off my mind. It's me. Oh, yeah. And tonight, I'm teaching the investment class. <laughs> okay, all glory goes to God. So God will remind me of this thing. If God is with you, who can go against you? Okay, amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, um, the old car that I have been drive for 17 years broke down many times. And um, it is not um, but I do not dare to change the car because I do not dare to uh, spend a big lump sum of money. So I had all sorts of fear and I had um, poverty mindset. After I talked to Joyce, and she encouraged me, she advised me to hear from God regarding this. And she said I shouldn't let fear immobilize me. And I, I realized that because of the fear, it, it um, made me to rely on, on myself and not on God at all. So I started to accept the truth and to overcome the fear and um, to, to accept the truth and overcome it. And I realized that um, all this fear is not something that I think is not something that I assume that's so scary or difficult. And because I submit to the Lord and um, receive and accept the, the uh, spiritual advice from the authority figures in my life, and I started to walk in the realm of favor of God. And some of the favor that I experienced in this process are a bank offered me car loan with a very low interest rate rate. And the whole process is very fast and easy. And at first, Produa offered me 4000 for the trading car. And after that, a, a workshop offered me 5000 Then I, because I would like to sell my car in a better price, so I started to declare. So after I declared, finally, Produa offered me 5500 And this is something very impossible during MCO. They offered me such a price. So I realized that, um, praise the Lord, I realized that uh, when we submit to God and align in His timing, we, we are walking, we are experiencing the new level of breakthrough. And when we are submit to our authority figure that God put in our life, and we submit to God, and we, um, we unlock the promises of God in our life. So uh, let's keep advancing. All glory to the Lord. Oh, I, I already got my new car, and, and at first when I step in, I really don't know how to drive, and I keep asking God to help me. So um, today I drive a new car to ATRC. Yeah. All right, today we want to teach. This is it's very rare chance both of us teach together and, and sit together to teach. And this is a very um, good topic to teach worship and war together as a family. Worship and war together as a family. Why I put these two words together? Because we war and we worship. We worship and we war. So I will let Jacob teach the first portion. Hey. Hi everyone, good morning. So let's look at uh, what is worship. So when you look at this question, what is in your mind? What is your answer? Is worship singing? Just like this little girl? Is worship, is it is praying about all praying? Oh. Is it demonstrating outwardly our love of God by using our bodies, dancing, shaking, or jumping, or whatever? Do we need music in order to worship? Does our environment have to be quiet? So there's a lot of uh, wrong um, uh, 
uh, thinking that we need to have a quiet time. So uh, then that means that it's considered a worship. So it must be shh, quiet, right? Or can we worship God while shopping or working or cooking or whatever you are doing daily? Can or not? Yeah. So while worship comes in all of these forms and places and in many more, some more, okay? Now, most Christians focus their worship on relationship and adoration. This is right, but worship is more than music and meditation. So first, worship is the way in which we express our love and honor for God. When, you, when we worship, actually, we really like express our love, express our honors, when we really put God as, our, as, as the first place. So second worship is sacrifice. It's all about sacrifice as well. And dedication of our lives to God. So in Romans 12, 10, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which your reasonable service. Which, are, which is your reasonable service. And second worship is sacrifice, right? So second point is thanksgiving and act of kindness to your fellow man. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name, to our God. But do not forget to do good and to share for which such sacrifices God is well pleased in Hebrews 13. So this is something that we need to really thank God, especially like we share testimony, we give thanks to God. This act of our thanksgiving to God is also one of the ways that we express our worship. And also faithful service. In Bible Philippians it says, Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering, on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I'm glad that rejoice with you all. So it's, it's, it's really like showing that the faithful of service in the worship. Now, number three is worship is bringing His will to us. What do you mean by this? It's bringing God's will to us when we worship. So we are apostolic worshippers, right? Amen? So tell your neighbor, you are an apostolic worshiper. Yes, we are apostolic worshiper. There should be a sound coming out of you, every one of you, that carries the authority that Jesus has given to us. So we must know that we are apostolic worshiper and we have the authority that's come from Jesus that has been given to us. And we... Oh, wow. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> okay. So there should be sound. So that's why there's a sound coming out just now, right? Ah. Okay, okay. So Luke 10, 19 to 20. So Bible say, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you, Bible says, right? Jesus said, nothing will harm you because you are able to overcome all the powers of the enemy. So however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So from the Bible, we know that Jesus said we have the authority and he gave us the authority. So we should all have this basic understanding of our apostolic call. This is our apostolic call. We must know and we must recognize it. Our worship is able to show forth the glory of God in our family. If we worship as a family, worship in our family, build the family altar, we actually show forth the glory of God in our family. Right? And our worship is able to shift and shape atmosphere in our family. So it's so important. And our worship is able to put
push back the darkness in our family. Tell Amen. neighbor, we are able to push back the darkness. Yes. Yes. It's so strong. We, we, we have this ability because Jesus said we have this authority to do it. And worship is able to cause many to come to his light in our family. That means, let's say your family members, some of them is still non-Christian, still not believe in God. But with your worship, they are able to cause them to come to his light. They are able to come to his presence. So through God, we have the power to penetrate any sphere he sent us to do. So what is your sphere? You need to think of what is your sphere. Is it family? I think if let's say you have a family, you have built a family and you have your current family, this is one of your sphere. And you have your uh, workings or your job, your career, that one is your sphere. So through God, we are able to have the power to penetrate in any sphere he sent us to. So make sure that he sent you to, right? Then only you will have the power, then he will give you the power to overcome it. And we have the power to set up. We can set up because we are apostolic people. We can set up, we can build, and we can put into motion that which God has sent us to establish. So we must know what is the purpose and where God has sent us to. So everyone make up already, right? So because of the sound, right? <laughs> so when Jacob is mentioning about this point, it's just I have been reminded by the Holy Spirit. I want to share this testimony. Some of you, you, you know that when, I, when we first moved into our new house, we had all kinds of warfare, all kinds of unbelievable supernatural things happen. So... But we feel that we need to <laughs> occupy the land as quick as we can. So we really like gone through the whole warfare for, for, for months, I think one month or two months. But thanks God, that is the time our family, we, we, it's, it turned out to be a testimony for our family how to work and worship together as a family. It means we really decree, we read the word of God, we we welcome God's light to penetrate in this house. We do the we did the ident identification, repentance, and we ask God to show us what are the issues which have been uh, what were the sins that have been committed by the tenants before who were living in that house. We caused such a huge open door. So we praise God and we have the RPRC intercessor team even came to our house. So by the way, we have we can destroy RPRC has under one structure. We have uh, experienced intercessor can be deployed to go to, to, to your house if you need any house cleansing. So that is the thing is so beautiful when whole family we just stand up together and each one of us we operate in our gift together. Some some of us we have the word of knowledge, some of us we have the word of wisdom. When we do that. God is pleased with us. It's really like we enthrone God in our family. We build a family altar in our family. So each family is a war unit. We worship and we war. We war and we worship. Why do we need to worship as a family? First, we always need to mention about the benefits and benefits after benefits, just like how we promote FIC. So why we need to worship as a family? Because first is an increase of strength. Because the Bible says one can put 1,000 to fight, but two can put 10,000 to fight. Now I feel so much better because all the audience are sitting in front of me. Is that all? I just look at the camera, camera. So we need to understand this very valuable principle of multiplication. One puts 1,000 to fight, but two can put 10,000 to fight, not just 2,000. So there is a principle of multiplication. And why we need to worship together as a family? There is a power of agreement. Like we remember, like whenever we face challenges, we put our children at work. We say, come on, come on, activate your prophetic gift. Now go to prophesy regarding your, your daddy, mommy uh, um, scenario. Now we are facing, come on. So we just activate the prophetic gift and we all just hear what the Lord 
uh, is saying to our family, and very often we found we have found that God will speak to us because we have the same mind, same heart, same spirit. So God will say the same things to us. So there is the power of agreement. Jesus told us again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. So there is the power of agreement. This is the power of agreement that increases the effectiveness of our prayer. So how many family members in your family, you, you, you can start to think about it. And some of you, you might tell me, um, I'm not family yet. Well, you can always establish your personal altar first. And when the times to come, you build your own family altar in, in future. Or you are the only one who is in your family, then you need to cling to the promise of God and say that because of me, God will show favor to my family. My families are going to the kingdom of God. I'm the first one who, who believe Jesus Christ in, in my family today. Uh, except one all of my family member, I left them one by one to come to, to, to the Christ because I claim the promises of God all the time. So we need to know of who we are and we need to keep remembering the promises of God to us is good for us. Agree means we agree with God. We make the same sound or voice of earth that is coming from heaven. Because you agree with the voice from heaven, not the voice from the enemy, not the voice from the deception, not the voice of the people around you, but the voice of Father. There is the power of agreement. So our sounds are in harmony with God's sound. Amen? Number three, when we worship together, we walk together as a family, we bring the Lord's presence. We have a special promise from Jesus that he himself will show up when we gather together in his name. Do we believe this? Matthew 18, 20 says, when, Where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am in their midst. So whenever you and your family, even you just say a simple prayer, make a simple decree, God is with you. Amen? So when we come together as a family, He is there with us. It's regardless of how many family members you have. Number four, it brings blessing to thousand generations. Isn't it good? Even you do not have your natural children, you can bring blessing to your spiritual children. So you, you can start to think, who are your next generation you are going to raise up? In the Hebrew culture, we found, I found that it's very um, interesting, one thing very interesting about them is that all families that work together and they prosper together. It's like, I have money, I'm very rich, I'm going to cause my generation become very rich. So each grandparent will leave inheritance to their grandchildren. Their prosperity was passed from one generation to another. A mindset of preservation and posterity develop. And there are some questions for us to ponder. Whom will become our key model of worship? Are you going to worship like Daniel? Are you going to worship like um, Joshua or David? Will we worship like Joshua? Can we know when to submit like Mary? When to be seen like Martha? You cannot just um, sit there doing nothing all the time. There is time for you to be busy, but you must know when do you need to submit like Mary. Can we agonize like Jesus did in Gethsemane and you still worship? Even in the midst of challenges, can you still worship? Will the enemy recognize our anointing after we have been in God's presence? When people look at you, how do people describe you? How do people see you, view you? Are they going to see you as a problem? Um, uh, you, you are the solution provider? Are they going to see you as the one who really bring the sun and light to them? What will our family worship look like in the future? This is a very good question, even though for those you are single, so we see that some of you are single, but I bless you. You are able to find your godly spouse in this year season. This is the right timing. So what will our family, you need to think about this question as well. 
what will your family worship look like in the future? We start to set the model from now. So how do we build our family altar? There is a spiritual altar when whatever we do in our house, either we open up the portal of heaven or we open the portal of hell. So what kind of altar we are building today in our house? How do we represent God as a family on the earth? So I will let Jacob to carry on about family altar. <laughs> so now, now we're talking about family altar. So we will see in the Bible, we'll look at the Bibles. What are the examples that we can learn from to how this uh, family altar been built in, in their life? So in Bible Genesis 35, see, you say Jacob say, okay, so I'm saying now, uh, Jacob say to his household and to all who were with him, then come, let us go up to Bethel, where I will build an altar to God. So in the Old Testament during the Genesis, when they worship God, they will build an altar to God. So God created families and has a heart for families. So families is created by God. Okay? So family is the unit of society and children are the future of our world. So it is so important that um, we need to really uh, cultivate a godly culture in our family because children are the future of our world. So if let's say we don't have a godly culture in our family, it will cause the children to be ungodly and this is, will become disaster for, for the future. So the family altar is therefore very important to God as it is a time of communion and also cons consecration and dedication of the family, right, during the family altar. So for this, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derived his name. This is basically it seems that God created the family. Right? And he really loved families. Let's look at the first um, examples in the Bible. Abraham families, Abraham's family altar. So everywhere the family relocate, Abraham built a family altar. Okay? If you remember, look at the uh, uh, look at your Bibles in Genesis. So from there, he went to, on towards the hill of east of Bethel and uh, pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to Lord and, caused, and called on the name of the Lord. So Abraham made it known to God and to his family because he's together with his family and he built the altar. So he made known to God and his family that he respects his covenant with God. He know that he have covenants with God. God had made covenant with him and he respects that covenant. That's why he, he always worship God and build altars uh, uh, to God. And he was dependent of God and also honor God that, that, and that his family was dedicated unto God. So he is not like just himself who uh, worship God. Or he actually bring along his family because he need to pass on these good examples to the generations. So the family altar is a place for strengthening relationship. It's a time and it's a place to strengthen relationship with God and relationship in the family. So when we, our family, when we have, I, I really can feel that when we have this uh, family altar together in the family, you will feel something tangible um, happening, something is happening and something different is happening in the family. You'll feel that the relationship with God, of course, it will continue to build closer and closer. And beside that, this is true, relationship with family. You'll feel that because you work together as a family, any problem in the family or your family members or any issue, you can bring it out. When you pray together, you feel that power. You feel that uh, kind of... Uh, 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 close. the relationship will become closer and closer because you know that your family member is standing with you together and war together with you. 
So Abraham practiced and passed down the family altar that today is still practiced and maintained among Jews, uh, among Jews and Christians. So he passed down. He do it, he practiced it, and then he passed down. He teach the next generation. He made it become a good example to the next generation. So the family altar is a place to pass down godly principle to children and generations forever. So it is a good place. Sometimes you, you, some, some people who may, may ask, may, may say, I don't know how to teach my children. I don't know how to make them become uh, uh, better in terms of more godly in, in, in God's eyes. This is the best time during the family altar. It's a time you share about what uh, God's principle in the Bible. You talk about that and then you teach your children during this uh, 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 session in the family altar, right? And what are the legacy do you want to pass down to your generation? This is a question to every one of us, right? Somehow in Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Okay? Impress, impress them in, on your children. See, Bible say, impress them on your children. You have, as a parent, we have the responsibility to really pass on this um, godly legacy to our children. So we need to impress them on your children. You need to teach God's word to your children. Okay? Don't depend on other people. As a father and mother, you have the uh, biggest responsibility to, towards your children. So talk about them when you sit at home. You see the Bible say, when you sit at home, that means when you are at home, when you have your family altar, you should talk about all this, what is my commandment, the God said, right? So, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down or when you get up, some more, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. And write them on your door frames of your houses and on your gates. So for Abraham, the family altar was not just for a tradition, but to preserve relationship with God. This is more important for intimacy, service, and lasting legacy. So we learn a lot from Abraham's family altar, right? So God must remain the father, king, and savior of our family. Now next, we look at his son, Isaac's family altar. So Isaac built a family altar and established relationship with the God of his father, Abraham. See, Isaac learned from his father because his father uh, giving a good examples during the family altars. So that's why Isaac also built a family altar, okay? Because he wants to establish relationship with God. So in Genesis 26, 23 to 25, from there, he went up to uh, Bathsheba. That's, that night, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants from the sick of my servant, Abraham. So Isaac built an altar. After that, Isaac built an altar there on the spot and call on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent and also there he served, uh, ser his servant uh, dug a well as well at the place. So Isaac built a family altar at his home and call on the name of the Lord just as his father did, right? Just as Abraham did. Because he's learned, he wants to build the relationship with God. So the relationship between Abraham and God was so great that God named himself the God of Abraham. See, right, in the Bibles, God always say, I am the God of Abraham. Because Abraham had built that close relationship with God. And Isaac activated 
the covenant with God and his father. So God renamed himself the God of Abraham and Isaac. You see, so we need to have every one of us, we need to activate the covenants with God again and create. That means we need to have the close relationship with God ourselves. If children cannot say, oh, my fathers and my mother have close relationship with God, that's why I also have. No, children, you must also have to learn that to build the relationship with God personally as well. This is your responsibility, right? So we need, you learn from here, you see that the Isaac need to take his own responsibility to activate the covenant again, even though God have a covenant with Abraham, right, In, uh, with their family. Now look at Jacob's family. Um, this is the Bible Jacob's, okay? Not, not my <laughs> family, okay? So let's look at Jacob's family altar. So Jacob built a family altar and established relationship with the God, with the God of his father, Abraham and Isaac. Now, Genesis 33, 18 to 20. After Jacob came from uh, Pad Padam's Aram, he arrived safely at the city of Shechem uh, Canaan, in Canaan and came within sight of the city. So for a hundred pieces of silver, he bought from the sons of Haman and the father of Shechem, the plot of ground where he uh, pitched his, cake, his tent. And there he set up an altar. See, he learned from his father, his grandfathers. So he also built up an altar and called it El Elohi Israel. Now Jacob prayed to activate the covenant blessing. You see, he built the altar. He, he also activated the covenant blessing of his grandfather Abraham and father Isaac. So he do it by himself as well. This is his responsibility. And then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, you who say to me, go back to your country and your relatives and I will make you prosper. So after Jacob made his vow to God and a decision, you see, Jacob made decision to serve God. So we need to have uh, the understanding that we need to make a decision to serve God. You are not depend on whether your father had made decision, your mother had made decision, or whoever had made decision for you. But no, you need to make a decision to serve God and to rely on God as His heavenly Father. You need to recognize that our God is your heavenly Father and God was named the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, now additional. One more, that means Jacob's his name is there. God recognized it. So then he said, I am, then the Lord says in Exodus, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, because three of them have made covenant with God and want to serve God. And at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. So God called himself the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and now would embrace Moses in a covenant relationship for glory to flow in and through him as deliverer of Israelites who were in slavery. So the family author strengthens relationship with parents and children, as what I mentioned before, for the generations, generational legacy of being a part of of the family of God in at, eternally, it, okay? Eternally, it's okay? Which is the heart of God of our Father. So if, let's say, our family, one generation to another generation, we continue to serve God and we have the relationship and the covenant with God, God is very, very happy with that. Okay? This is what He wants us to have. And God's covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is so strong and eternal that the covenant blessing and protection can be activated in each generation that call on, calls on God. What does it mean? It means that this covenant is so strong, this blessing covenant and protection covenant is so strong, when the next, 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 how many is next generation, each generation, 
as long as they activate this covenant, God will listen to them. And if they call from God, God will continue the covenant with them as well. So hundreds of years later, remember, after Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, hundreds of years later, the descendants of Abraham were being uh, tormented by the king of Egypt. And God remembered the covenant of protection, this covenant of protection that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it, let's look at Exodus 2, 24 to 25. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant. You see, he remembered his covenant. When, when the Israelites, when they activate his, their covenant, God is always remember his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them because God remember his covenant. Now we can activate this covenant of blessing. We, every one of us today, we can activate this covenant of blessing, protection and provision through faith in Jesus Christ, son of Abraham and son of David. Because in Galatians, it said, He, Christ, redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith, every one of us might receive the promise of the Spirit. We can have this covenant. It's a good news to every one of us, right? As long as we activate this covenant and we will have this blessing, and we will have this protection in the covenant. So let's look at Jacob restores his family altar. In Genesis 35, 1 to 5, Then God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there, and build an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So, God, uh, so Jacob said to his household and to all, everyone, uh, to all, who were with him, get rid of all the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourself and change your clothes. Then come and let's go up to Bethel where I will build an altar to God who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings in their ears and Jacob buried them under the ox of Shechem. And then they set up and the terror of God fell on the towns, uh, fell on the towns all around them so that no one pursued them. So during that time, it's actually they are in uh, this Shechem. It's just a lot of people want to believe uh, the enemies want to fight with them. Because remember the, uh, the story about says, uh, daughter, Jacob's daughter, has been raped by this uh, Shechem. So, because of that incident. So, but because of that, this uh, Jacob's want to go and want to worship God. And because of that, God give this, uh, then the gods, uh, the terrors of God fell on the towns and all around them so that they will not pursue uh, Jacob's and their families and their peoples. So, when the family altar is this disregarded, it is easy for the world's culture and act of pagan worship to infuse a family with dangerous consequences. So if we, in our family, we did not really put an effort to build the family altar, there's a risk. See, There's a risk that pagan worship or whatever culture from the world, it will able to penetrate into your family. And it may influence yourself, your spouse, or it, it may influence your children. And that's why you see some of the Christian family, or those they say they are Christian family, but how come their children is not look like a Christian family children? It's not it's doing some ungodly things or whatever. So it's because the family altar is not there. They did not have the family altars in their families to really build the relationship with God. Because of that, the world's culture it can penetrate into the family and into your children and other members in the family. So God appeared to Jacob to shape up 
with his family priority and take back dominion in his home with Jehovah God as the God of his household. Right? So God appeared and asked Jacob to go and build an altar in Bethel again. Go to Bethel again, right? Remember the scripture just now? So God actually appeared to Jacob and shaped up his family and said, all these unclean things, you must get rid of it and so that you come and worship me. So Satan looked for opportunity. Our enemies always and every day, every second, every minute look for opportunities to entice people to minimize their relationship with God. Same, everyone, our family, our children, our spouse. So we as every day, so that's why we must be very careful every day. We must be very uh, careful about what we are doing, what we're thinking, what is our thought. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how do we, after we, we talk about so much about family altar and why do we need to build family altar, I just want to have a quick uh, summary of what are the practical steps what we can do to build family altar. But I really don't want any one of you, you take it like legalistic or religious way. Like, so it's like, <laughs> do I need to do one to eight, step one to step eight, yeah. then only consider a complete step. Yeah. I cannot tell you what do you do in a family altar and how many steps you need to do. Each one of you, you need to hear a voice from God. But I just give you some, some tips only. But it, it doesn't mean every time you need to start from number one. Number two, number three, number four, okay? <laughs> so, um, worship means you really, worship is not just about singing song, singing a feel good song, a warrior song, or dancing violently. It really is a firm Christ is the head of your home. Means you really live out the truth in your family. How do we pass down the most God, uh, the godly principle to our children? I think the best way is we model it. We really live out the truth in our family. We become the model. So worship, prayer, and acknowledging God is very important in our family. Just like Joshua was a determined leader of Israel and his household, and he said that, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself, the day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river, or the gods of Amorites, in whose land you are living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. That should be our family tagline. As for me and my household, household, we will serve the Lord. Can we all say this together? But as, as for me and my household, household we, we will serve, serve the Lord. Lord. Amen. Because God was worshipped in Joshua's heart and life. And his worship was a priority in his home. So we need to worship God in our heart and life. And so many people, they are so concerned about doing good. Because growing up in Chinese family, we always have been taught we need to be good. But it's not about we do good. Everything comes from our heart. So we really need to worship God in truth, in spirit, and in heart. God becomes the father of a father, a mother, a children, in intimate and acknowledge this relationship. So we cannot force our children to build relationship with God, but we need to cultivate that culture in family. It means things young. And so many parents, they are so concerned about, when do I need to? When can I start to teach my children? I would say from baby. From day, they were days or I already let them to hear the word of God. Whenever I have chance. Why not? Because when they were baby, I tell you, the best time is baby time because they don't know how to talk. They won't argue. So <laughs> you feed them with all kinds of good things you want to, them to learn. And God's role of father in the home creates faith. And expectation of his provision, protection, and care. We need to enthrone God in our family and acknowledge that he is our provider, he is our protector. And I remember when, in the early days, when, whenever Jacob was away, children can feel it. Children just say, Mommy, I just feel a bit 
like very insecure when daddy was away. I will always remind them, our God is our protector. Yes, your daddy can protect you, but your daddy cannot replace God. We got to acknowledge this. So I reaffirm and reaffirm. Of course, I allow them to sleep together with me because I know they were still young. They need this kind of security when the daddy was away. But what I'm trying to say that we need to grab every opportunity to teach, to live out the truth. I mean, we really exercise what we are teaching. When God is worshipped, honored, and revered by a family, respected by a family, the family is in God's secret place for lasting legacy. Amen? We are in God's secret place for lasting legacy. When we worship God, when we honor God, and of course, how do you build family altar? One thing you can do, you can do Bible study and you can start to teach the word of God. So I cannot teach you, I cannot tell you how often you should do it. You need to hear from God. Whenever you have time, whenever you feel that now is a, is a time, I want the whole family to study the word of God. Just do it and no uh, specific way or legalistic way. And really meditate the word of God today together. Even you just teach a few verses, you talk about the verses with your, with your family, it's still so important. Because when a family reads the Bible together, respect for his word, and you ask the Rema, and you will become a reality that result in obedience to his word. So let the word of God become the reality in your life. Means you live out the truth in your family's values to be based on God's word. Not and not what is popular in society or taught in school. Because when they are going to school, you cannot avoid that. They, there are a lot of ungodly cultures or ungodly things have been taught in school. Like you can sex with everyone. And in some school, they even um, teach them you can have access as long as you do the preparation by providing a uh, condom. So this kind of thing, how, 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 a uh, uh, spiritual, how a uh, godly parents to start to teach your children. You don't just say no only, you need to really, you need to build their foundation since they are young. That's why I say since baby, since they are in your, in your womb. So the Antichrist spirit has infused all society, bringing confusion and deceptions mm. today. And even a lot of wrong teaching in a school. So the word of God is being twisted with lies and deception, and many are being subdued in a tolerant society to accept the lies of Satan, including Christian parents today. Therefore, the home has to be a place of teaching and re reinforcing God's word, principles, and values. For example, um, we all know sibling argument is very common in, in each family, especially when they are very young. So one thing we, tr we start to exercise is I want them to reconcile with each other as fast as they can. Because I don't want them to bring this kind of bitterness until they grow up. And they still mention, oh, 20 years ago, you hurt me, you know? This is very common in many families. You still remember how did your sibling offend you even that was 20 years ago. This is all because in the home, we need to exercise forgiveness and forgiveness. And, and uh, um, like normal children, my children sometimes will, will do the wrong thing, dishonor me. But because they have been growing up in this family, so they have been taught the truth, so they will come to apologize to me quickly now. So I realized that the older they get, they, the quicker they come to reconcile with each other. So that shows that it is so important we need to reinforce seeing God's word and principle and value. And of course, start from us. So the fastest spirit we, period we can reconcile with each other is within three minutes. The slowest is not later than few hours. So I will not allow this happen in my family. I will ask them to reconcile with each other as quick as possible. So a family altar is very powerful to protect families and prevent further destruction of societies and our world. And one thing is very important is, of course, when argument happen, always is someone's fault, not your fault. Like Mandarin say, thousand fault is other people's fault, not my fault. So 
But this is this is the demon strategy. Try to divide the family. Demonic forces are assigned to try to hook us into sin or idolatry. If we have sin or idolatry in our life that we are unwilling to give up, we ascribe that thing a higher value than God. We worship it could be anything. So that's why time to time as as the parents in the family, we need to ask God to show us is there any iniquitous pattern or of of um generational curses which is very deep in our bloodline we need to get rid of like greediness some people just cannot like poverty mindset some people just are so concerned about whether they want to give like every month they it's like why wow, you ask them give up 100 ringgit is like cut their meat <laughs> do you have this all some people are very concerned about giving time you ask them to spend time to, to do this, they will cut, start to calculate mm, what kind of benefit I can I get. Wow, I spend so much time on. So everyone is different. We need to ask God to show us. Do we, is there any idol in our life? It, especially this man, we do not want to develop golden calf. golden calf. So is there any golden calf? This can be anything. It's handphone. Do you keep checking at your handphone until it's become your God? So we have then broken this commandment and we, eat, we have compromised our covenant when we idolize anything, it could be anything. So when we do this, we step over from the protection and blessing of that covenant. Watch for covenant breaking spirit. There are covenant breaking spirit which cause the division in the family. Divorce is one of them. Confession, that's, that's why we confession. If, if we, you are wrong, you just say, sorry, I'm sorry for saying this word to hurt you just now. Would you please forgive me? And another person still say, in the name of Jesus, I forgive you and I bless you. And sharing witnesses can be a meaningful time in families. Let your, um, let your children know parents are imperfect. We are human, we can be wrong. But that doesn't mean we need to have wisdom. It depends on how old you are are your children and you cannot tell every secret to your children you, you need to know huh? they are not your friends let me tell you this because i know some parents are doing this they are not your friends please they are your children so you cannot expect you want to make the decision hello can you please pray with me and what do you think should i buy a Volvo or musk <laughs> so you, you you cannot ask your children to to make decision together with you we need to be because some parents are very friendly with their children until they talk about everything so i i know some some children are growing up in this kind of family they bear a lot of force for them parents especially chinese family we don't want to be so foolish we need to have wisdom when we say share the witnesses you need to have wisdom wisdom and ask god what other things can be shared what other things children can bear give them little by little and depend on the ages and you don't tell them, oh, we are going to have no money this month. <laughs> you, 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 you leave the worry burden to them. And they are so worried. And then we need to make it very meaningful time in family where the spirit of humility is demonstrated by parents and children. Means as parents, we, we, we might be wrong. So if we are wrong, we just say sorry to our children. I'm sorry for doing this to you. But I'm not sorry for being for punishing you or disciplining you because that is the responsible of a parent. So please do not get me wrong. Go to say sorry every time. So therefore confess your sin to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And we realize that very often we cannot confess him because of pride or because of mistrust. It's, it's always because of mistrust. So we need to build the trust in the family member. Always like, like, like my younger ones always sometimes would misunderstand her, 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 her elder sister intentions. I always told her, you need to trust your, your sister has no bad intention. So when you think in this way, you will not feel offended. So we are all sinners, we need a place to share witness, shortcomings and failure in a safe place of help, accountability, restoration and encouragement. So family is a place to restore, to be restored, to be accountable like I watch, I watch you, you watch me. Encourage, 
And sharing hearts is very good time. It's time of interactive sharing. It's very strategic and very powerful and can be practiced at altars in family. What to share, we need to have wisdom, of course. Caring and helping family bonds and relationships are strengthened. So as young as they can, get them to do some house chores, get them to involved in the family issue. And strengthen and give strength and give of each member are discovered, validated, and celebrated. It means I know your strengths, I also know your weakness. So I try to let you your strength keep being developed in, in family. So we value that. Also, we need to pray for the needs of family members. And family members are trained to hear from God and get to know his voice. It's not the Sunday school teachers or leaders' responsibility to teach your children. It is you as parents, you need to teach your children, activate your children to hear from God. If, they, if not now, then when? So as young as they are, you need to train them to hear from God. Training in hearing the voice of God can be very motivating and stimulating. Mm. And I tell you, very often they are they can hear from God very accurately. Yes, their maturity is not there, but that doesn't mean they cannot be trained. They can be trained. And it deepens a relationship with God and ATVs prophetic revelation. It's, it's, it's very, very good and very time when you do it time to time. You do it together as a family. And of course, we need to culture and, and in growing up in Chinese culture, don't you think we we tend to talk about bad things more than good things. <laughs> so we need to get rid of this kind of culture. If, if you don't believe me, you go to listen to a lot of families. Whenever they have a talk, they always talk about the bad things about other people. All the bad things happen in their life. So we need to get rid of this kind of culture. We need to always, let's talk about what are the good things in your life? What are the good things happen in your school? Ask them to remember the good things. Of course, if your children have, been, have faced a, abuse or, or bullied by some, someone must tell you. But what I mean is not every day abused and, or mistreated by someone, right? So shouldn't be so negative. In a culture of honor and gratefulness, heart of thanksgiving. So we need to help everyone. We, we need to have this heart of thanksgiving and we express our thanksgiving. We need to cultivate this culture in our family, don't you think? Because when we do that, it is, it is really let God's presence to penetrate in our family. So it is good to end our quiet time and personal altar with thanksgiving to God and also in our family. And be thankful for each member. Instead of keep blaming each family member, we say thank you to our family member. Thank you for doing this to me. Thank you, you... you you help me to do this. Um, before Mary, you keep saying thank you. After Mary, also need to, to say thank you to your spouse and to your children, to your mother and your father because we don't take it for granted. Just because they are your parents doesn't mean they do everything for just, just it's like they have to do it, no choice. It's not in this way. Let's shift our mindset. We need to be really be thankful for each member of the family. No one owe you anything, okay? So be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Even like today you are really going through a lot of warfare, it's a bad day for you, you still say, Lord, I still thank you. And I declare tomorrow is better than today. Yeah. Am I going to overcome? So this is the mindset we need to embrace quickly, not slowly. I realize a lot of them, they are very warm, they are very miserable for months, for weeks, for weeks, for months because they allow them to become weak for weeks. Why? You want to allow, you don't even allow the, the worry or anything to come in your life to affect you, become you, to become weak for hours. You must rise up as quick as you can. That is, that is a will and a choice. And I remember I was a person, those who know me five years ago, when they see me today, say, wow, Joyce, you look so different. You know what? Last time, I, you, you look so worried. And you were very negative. And I thought you had depression. Now I'm only there to tell you. <laughs> so I didn't know I was so, you know, 
Sometimes you cannot see yourself because you do not stand in front of the mirror all the time. So I, we can carry a mirror with us if we want to see. <laughs> God is our mirror. So we need to allow God to show us what are, your, are our weaknesses. But the good news is the more you get to tea to tea, the more different you are. Today they say I'm like a sun, very bright. And and that is all because of God and, and it's a real and choice. I choose to get rid of all kinds of negative thinking. All start from mindset. If you ask me, I will say all start from mindset because when I really went to filter it, I realized I have a lot of negative mindset. It's like every minute. I haven't started to do one thing. I already start to worry about all kinds of bad consequences. And I can, I can uh, presume or assume the bad scenario of these things. Can you imagine how negative and how can I be joyful in the Lord if I was... Uh, it's not my life was very bad. It's because I feel my life is very bad. And that is the biggest change shifting in me is step two. Because when I know that, I've been deceived. Because each day when I work out, I always think, what kind of bad thing is going to awake for me? <laughs> Instead of today, when I wake up every time, what kind of good things are waiting for me? <laughs> so, we should be joyful always. We pray continually. We give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So family also creates an atmosphere of blessing and protection in our home and strengthens relationship. Trust me, it's work. Because worship God as a family is a command. You have no choice. It's not a choice. It's a command, Deuteronomy 11, 16 to 21. Be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord anger will burn against you and he will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. I'm sure none of us want to go through this because we want to, we want to possess all kind of blessing. Amen? So it's a command. It's a command, a command, fix these words of mine in your heart. So we need to let the word of God really to, to we need to sing, let it sing in our heart, keep it in our heart and mind, tighten and symbol, do some note, make some symbol on your hands, find them on your forehead, teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home, means wherever you are, whenever you have chance. When you walk along the road, when you travel, when you lie down, when you get up, each morning, each night, you have so much time to talk about this to your family members. Write down on the door friends of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the day of your children may be many in the land the Lord showed to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. Amen? And it is a privilege. Don't feel it's an ayo. Why Joyce wants to teach all about it? I'm going to build family altar. How much time do I need to give? You don't view it as a disaster or a duty. View it as a privilege. Because you, the children of your servants will live in your presence. The descendants will be established before you. We want to be established. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the law. If you have wife, you have not had children, then your, your prudent wife is from the Lord. It is a privilege. You can pray together with your wife. wife. Build your family altar now. Don't wait until your baby comes because there will be even more challenging time. If you cannot build now, chances are it's more suicide for you to build in future. Build it the day you enter the marriage. A joy. It is a joy. Please do not view it as a religious task. You made this is a joy. You made known to me the path because Lord wants to show you the path of life and He wants to fill you with joy in His presence with eternal pleasure at your right hand. This is the promise of God to us. He wants to show us the path of life. He wants to fill us with joy in His presence. So it is a joy and it's eternal. Not the, it's a, it brings eternal value. And let's worship God as a family to occupy the land. I'm going to finish. The thief comes to destroy joy in life, but we will always have the strength to overcome him. War or worship as a family is very powerful to worship our 
to overcome our enemies. In warring against the enemy, we must learn how to start to occupy and possess our inheritances or our portion as a family. The tea, we, sorry. So we, when we possess the portion that God has for each of us, we become whole, we become fulfilled. We are full of peace. Are you whole, become whole? Are you fulfilled? Do you feel satisfied? Do you feel of peace? Let's settle for nothing less than the abundance, mean to the full, till it overflows the Lord has for us. Can we declare this? Let's, let's settle, settle for, for nothing, nothing less than, than the abundance the Lord has, has for us. us. Amen? Because Jesus can that we may have and enjoy life. Let's occupy and possess our family inheritances. That's all for today. And next week, ki and I are going to teach how to possess your family inheritance. Start to bring a godly, um, how to clear your house atmosphere and how to protect your home from evil influences. And how can you start to possess and occupy your family inheritances? So Lord, I thank you for, for, for all these messages you have given us today. And, and I see that a lot of family in this new season, you, you are being established and you are being repositioned in, the, in this right season. And some of you, you are being, you cannot see your dreams and your vision of last season and you even cannot believe this will happen in your family. But in this new season, the Lord say, reveal your prophetic words, reveal your your visions and dreams which I have put in you since you were young. And start to believe it, start to declare it, start to possess the things that the Lord wants you to possess. So in the name of Jesus, I also say, see that the Lord wants to bring restoration to each family, which caused your, your, your relationship, family between each members will be strengthening and being restored. And it's bring healing to each family. Is there any breach in the family? So I bless each one. We will start to exercise forgiveness, forgiveness in our family, because forgiveness is the best recipe to for the relationship. The more we exercise forgiveness, the better we become. Because we don't want to remember all these kind of bitterness. So uh, we will have set a session that we would like to give some of you. You have approached us. You have never received any redemptive prophecy. Redemptive prophecy are a very important prophecy regarding who you are, who, what you are called to do in each mountain regarding your gift. So if you really need redemptive prophecy, you can let Kuman know, then we will uh, go to breakout room to, minister, uh, to give you. But please show us the evidence that you don't have, you have never received this kind of prophet, uh, prophetic words. You, if you have received redemptive prophecy, you want to receive a new one, you need to tell us um, your last prophetic words have you fulfilled. If you haven't fulfilled, please don't ask for me because what is the point? You keep asking for prophetic words, but you never fulfill your prophetic words, never more about it. So please let us know if you want to have redemptive prophecy and, and you have never received it before. So we will uh, arrange our team to give you. You will definitely receive at least one today. Okay?